So what can go wrong with this? Well, as many of us already know, relays can have problems. And one of those is that these contacts right here confuse, causing your load just to stay on all the time, which is obviously not a good thing. And that's why you see double line break relays on oven boards to keep help prevent that from happening. Another thing is that those contacts right there can develop a very high resistance. Every time that relay shuts, closes, or opens, or more noticeably when it opens, it creates a little spark. And that eats away a little bit of that contact material, it reduces the surface area of it, and causes the resistance to ever so slightly increase over time. The resistance is actually not very high, it's in the mill ohm range, but over over time, it can actually increase to over an ohm or more, which is really bad because if you have 10 amps, 10 amps going through here, and say if you have uh, two ohms, that's I squared R, you've got 100 times two ohms, you've got 200 watts right there being dissipated at that relay, which is a lot of heat for a small area. And when that happens, that quickly degrades the uh, relay contacts and can cause it to, uh, you know, the snowball effect where it just pretty much burns itself out. Another thing that can happen is, well, that coil can open. And uh, I do see that happen sometimes. And obviously the relay just won't even work anymore. So you'll turn the oven on or whatever and you'll get voltage. Uh, you'll see... Uh, voltages change over here, but you'll never see this voltage go to zero because there's really nothing to pull it down if the relay is open. You can have a shorter relay, but it's really uncommon in low voltage circuits like this. That's more common when, when you have higher voltage circuits like a inlet valve that's running on 120 volt AC. You're going to see commonly shorted um, coils, but not, not typically in a circuit like this. Another thing that could happen is this diode could short out. That diode withstands a lot of abuse from that relay, and I have seen them short out, although not that often. If it does short out, basically that relay is not going to get any voltage because it's going to act like a wire. And this transistor actually is going to be supplying tons of current down to what is essentially a wire now. And if you have, if it's one ohm even, you've got 12 ohms, 12 volts divided by one ohm, you've got 12 amps. That resist that transistor is only capable of of uh, passing 0.2 amps, so it's going to burn out. And typically, when these semiconductors burn out, they don't typically open; they short out. So when that shorts out, you're going to probably blow a fuse somewhere. So that wouldn't be good if that shorts out. Another thing that could happen is, you know, this this transistor could short out on its own. If that happens, it's going to leave this relay on, and that bake element or whatever is just going to stay on which is obviously not good either. So those are the main things that can happen to this type of a circuit. The failures are typically gonna happen where the higher current is and the higher voltages are, and not typically down in this area over here, unless the microcontroller for some reason, you know, just goes out. So if you ever replace this relay, one thing you wanna consider is, well, a couple of things you wanna consider. Obviously, you wanna make sure you have enough current supply current passing capability which is going to be in the contacts here and they're going to be rated for a certain amount of current at a certain amount of voltage and you want to make sure at minimum that the new relay has the same or better capability as the old relay the resistance of that coil i think is important because well okay first of all if you're going to replace a relay the first thing if you can find the exact relay for it then I would replace it with the exact one. That way you're not modifying the circuit. Because if you replace it with a relay that's not specified for it, you're actually making a modification to the circuit. Although it may not be a bad thing, you technically are making a modifi modification to the circuit. And the reason is uh, you're not going to find a relay that's going to have the exact coil resistance as the original, likely. Uh, now, if you have a relay that's got a coil resistance that's higher, you're actually putting less of a demand on that transistor because the coil resistance is higher, 
then there's less current flowing through here, you're probably fine. Just make sure the contacts are rated well enough. Now on the other hand, if you put a relay in there and you use one with a lower coil resistance, you're, you're requiring that transistor there to supply more current, which could be a bad thing. Uh, this particular transistor use here and is common and a lot of boards is um, 2N3906, which is 200 milliamps. And this particular relay uh, that we have here that, that's on the Proto board uh, is, I think it's about a, it's about 100 ohms at 12 volts. So it's going to be, you know, just over, you know, just under 100 milliamps is, is going to be, or just over 100 milliamps is going to be the, um, the current which is less than half of what this can supply. Now, if you take a relay um, and you replace it with a one that has a 60 ohm coil resistance, which is probably not going to realistically happen because that's pretty low. But just for example, if you put one in there that has 60 ohms and you've got 12 volts, uh, now you've got this circuit is supplying 200 milliamps, which is right on the edge of what this transistor can do. And if you do that, you may very well burn that transistor out. It may not happen right away, but it, it could happen over time and, and possibly soon. So you just want to be aware that if you replace this relay with something that's of a much lower resistance, you are affecting the circuit beyond what, the way it was designed. And that's basically it. So here's a proto board mock-up for that circuit where you have your relay, your main driver transistor, which is that one, your pre-driver, this guy here, and then a microcontroller pulse. We're going to simulate a 5-volt pulse using a 5-volt Zener diode and a resistor to create a voltage reference. So when I press this button here, we should get a little over 0.7 volts right there, which forward biases this, turns this transistor on. There's our 0.7 volts. Turns this transistor on, drops this down. This one drops down at the base to greater than 0.7 volts below the 12 volts, which turns that transistor on. This transistor is turned on. We've got almost 12 volts at the top of the relay. We've got 11.78. So that transistor is only dropping um, about 0.2 volts, which is what we want. So I hope this video has been helpful in understanding how a relay circuit works, some of the things that can go wrong with it, and how to approach troubleshooting it.